Hey, it's Tim, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk, and I got some news that just, well, might piss you off. Yeah, might just piss you off. It turns out, after doing some deep dive yesterday, did a lot of research and legwork figuring out these prices, that new truck prices, and I'm not just talking like the luxury trims, limited trims, I'm talking the base trims and the base setups and two-wheel drivers like this are getting more expensive. They've risen substantially in the past two years, I got some data that shows that certain trucks had a $2,500 increase year over year. Other trucks went up $6,800 in the span of two years. Yeah, you're not seeing something crazy in a lot. Truck prices are growing. They're getting more complex with packages and stuff. Yes, there's incentives. I'll include that in conversation in the video as well. So let's go get started. I'm going to put it on the screen. I'm going to show you what I found when I deep dived into data. I'm going to show you how much prices have really changed in just two years. We'll talk about these numbers. I'll tell you how incentives factor into this, and then I'll kind of give you my final thoughts on why this matters to you. So let's go and get started on all that right now. Okay, so we can head over to pickuptrucktalk.com. We can find the store over there, and I'll put it on your screen. So if you're not haven't uh, not watching it today, it's on home screen, something like that. I'll put a link down below. You can find the chart later on. It'll be in the description. Also, pin it to the top of the comments. You can find it that way. So let's start with the first thing, um, first image I put up there, which is a 2021 Chevy Silverado LT, so real base model, crew cab. See an increase, price increase of $3,600 over just the last two years. Inflation counts for about $160 to increase. So we got about $3,500, that's unexplained, of increase over the 2019 model. And a little bit of reason for that, but I'll get to that and why I still think that's bull. And so when you, you kind of go down here, um, let's go down to the chart. Then I'll come back for a minute, but I want to clarify a couple things, make sure, you know, get information out to you guys. I scoured old press releases. So I went back 2019 on all the media sites I could find, like Ford's media site or Chrysler or Stellantis or uh, Ram, or I went to Chevrolet and things like that. And I found all the old press releases that said about their pricing. And so I took that information and tried to do as many apples to apples. Now in those press releases, they always want to put out the lowest price first and the lowest price you can put out there. And so most of those trucks are base trucks. Uh, if you do like a crew cab, it's a five and a half foot bed. You don't do anything kind of crazy. And they're all two wheel drive models where they can, if they do offer that vehicle in two wheel drive, like say the trail boss when it comes four wheel drive. And so, and they're all the base engines. And so what I did in this chart was I took that in consideration and we'll get down to it. And I did brand model. I did the, en you can see the engine, you see the pricing, the price differences. And I made it as simple as I could. There's a regular cab, there's double cab and crew cab. We got rid of the quad cabs, we got rid of the double cab, we, uh, not, uh, we got rid of, what was it, super crew, super cab. We just made it as simple as we could to get information out to you. You can see a lot of these models had moderate, moderate changes, but a lot of them had thousands of dollars more, three, four thousand dollars more almost in many cases. And so that double cab is now $3,600 more than it was in just two years. And I'll get to that above. So we'll go back up there and look at that again. We can see the crew cab LTZ is $4,200 more than it was above. The double cab RST is 6,000. And I, I keep double checking my math on that one because I swear <laughs> something's goofy there. But you know, you can see it's consistently throughout the board, there's consistent price increases. So again, I did the best I could in this math. If you find an error, well, I apologize for that. But the reason that, du that double cab has gone in price is Chevy says, and this is the image from the media site. I don't know if I can highlight it, but it says that what's a f one, two, three, f the fourth bullet item down, and I'll put my mouse over it and you can kind of see it on the screen. It says more standard and available equipment on more affordable models. Okay, so if you scroll it down, you'll see that that's gonna be you know your affordable models, like your LT, right? And what's really crazy about Chevy's pricing LT is in the 2019 press release for the new model. Uh, 2019 was a model, uh, new model Silverado came out. At that time, the press release proclaims the 2019 Silverado LT crew cab has a starting MSRP, starting price, $700 less than today's truck, so 2018 model. So they proclaimed the 2019 model was cheaper. They, they made it cheaper than the model year before. Big deal, right? Fast forward to 2021, and this new truck runs $3,600 more than in, than in 2019. So much for that lower price. Thanks for the more standard safety equipment, or standard uh, safety, I guess, or standard equipment. I don't know what the, they made standard, but the last two years, you've made more stuff standard and you just jacked the price up. Well, that sucks. <laughs> um, another big shocker is Ram EcoDiesel, 
which came out in 2021, 2020 press release, uh, it was priced at 38585 so it's 3680 plus the destination fee. And so when you look at it, we priced out today. Well, that's not even a full year. Uh, 2020 models came out, so we're in 2021 model year, um, which just came out like in the fall. So what are we, six months in the 2021 model year? That's in May, uh, no, maybe eight months. And we've already seen a $900 increase. It's already gone up in just that short period of time. Uh, looking at other brands, Nissan Titan, new for 2020, saw big increases across the board. The truck didn't really have anything groundbreaking. I mean, it was a new uh, transmission. They put a moonroof. They updated the grill, some different colors, right? I mean, it didn't seem anything too groundbreaking to me. And if you look at this, this summary that they put out was in 2019. And it includes the $1,395 destination fee. So the SV Crew King Cab was 40000 The SL Crew Cab two-wheel drive was $48,380. I went to NissanUSA.com and the Crew Cab SL, right? So the one above, that was $48,340. Today, and again, it's 2020, 2021. We're not, we're not that far away. As a starting MSRP of $54,630 without the $1,695 destination fee, which I, they increased destination fee, which is... Which is crazy. It's now $6,500 more for that configuration. And for me, it's like, for what? For what? Well, you didn't do anything too crazy. Toyota has made some changes. They, they dropped transmission cooler, linked to that above, got people fired up. But they've added Apple Android Auto, Apple CarPlay. They have, I think, Wi-Fi in the truck now. They have a new uh, bigger screen. They have, um, I think there's new uh, uh, tuning for the engine. I mean, again, not big changes. Should be cheaper, these changes, you know, if you drop transmission cooler. Nope. Hasn't changed the price at all. So what we did, what I spent a lot of time with the other day, was kind of going through and making all these this charts. And I'm going to update this chart as I get information for you guys and I make changes. I make it as accurate as I can. But these are the price differences from 2019 to 2018, 2019, 2021. The engines, that's the base engine. That's I've gone to Chevrolet.com. So I took the, the media site information. I put that in with the Chevrolet.com and typed information. And I got the numbers from Chevrolet.com and made sure I matched up what engines they were. And so these are your price increases you go down. I mean, see the Crew Cab LTZ, $4,200. Now, this is interesting. Ford is next. These are 2019 pricing before the new model came out, 2021 model, right? And so these are the price differences between those in just three in just three years, in, well, two years. I mean, in just two years with a new model, the Crew Cab Platinum went up $5,800. The base XLT is up $2,500. And I mean, this is, this is not even any sort of packages on this. This is not even a Crew Cab. This is just, this is just the base pricing for the cheapest trucks have gone up. I mean, that's what blows my mind. People keep talking about how the luxury trucks are really expensive. The base trucks are going up. Base trucks are going up like crazy. So GMC Sierra didn't have the same many changes that Chevrolet had, which is interesting. Uh, Nissan Titan, we talked about those already, but look at that $6,500 change for the Crew Cab SL. Uh, Ram, so we're getting into Ram here. We have Ram changes. Again, not too crazy. Eco Diesel still surprised me. I thought almost a thousand bucks just year over year. I mean, I, I, I guess. I know rubber's getting more expensive. I know there's uh, COVID-related expenses they're trying to recuperate. I know we have some supply shortages, but a thousand bucks right at the top, bam. Um, probably not, I guess not a big deal, but the, the Crew Cab Limited was $3,000 more in just two years. And again, Ram was a new truck in 2019. So it's the same as Silverado. They were both brand new trucks in 2019. And in just two years, they've already increased those prices. The Toyota Tundra, uh, you know, not many changes, but yet the price is going up. $1,400 here, $1,600 there, $1,000 here. The only thing didn't change was the TRD Pro, which is kind of surprising to me. Everything else went higher. I don't know what happened with that one. I'm not sure if that was already kind of highly priced or not. So now you're thinking, well, Tim, Tim, hello, nobody pays straight MSRP. That's foolish. Everybody gets incentives. So incentives make up a big de deal in this. So who cares about starting price? You get money off that price anyways. Well, hold on a minute. Hold on just a minute. Let's talk about this. So, for example, the 2021 Chevy Silverado LT, we talked about above, right? $3,600 more, 
has some pretty hefty incentives right now on Chevrolet.com. So I pull this up, and this is done, I guess, zip code. I'm not sure what zip code I had in either my place here or Detroit. I kind of use both. But you're looking at discounts. It's saying net price discount, $6,000. You get six grand off. It's a pretty good deal, right? I mean, six grand on $40,000, that's a pretty good chunk of change. However, when you consider the fact that it's not really that reality of it because you're only getting really $2,400 off. What? You're not getting $6,000? Not really. They increased the price by $3,600, then they gave you a bigger rebate. So really, they're still making their money. You know, you're thinking you got six grand off, but they jacked the price up on the, on the backside and then they gave you more money off. Well, <laughs> it's, like, it's like I used to work at Walmart. This is a good example, we used to work at Walmart. We used to put things in end cap and we'd say, we'd roll them back. We'd put the price that was say 10 bucks, we rolled it back to eight to $7, right? Or $6, right? And that was a big rollback sale. And then when, when the rollback ended and we needed to move that merchandise even more, we put it on clearance. So we take over clearance, right? Well, clearance usually 6%, 70% off, right? But we would increase the original price from $10 to now like $12. And then we give you like 60% off. So you think you're getting a hell of a deal. When you're making same, you're basically paying the same amount of money you were paying two years ago. So <laughs> incentives aren't going to save you on this when they keep jacking up the base pricing. All you're doing is they're, you're just giving, they're giving you money back that they're already jacked up to make sure they made the more profit. So you're not really saving anything. They're just keep jacking up the pricing. So yeah, I just thought it was really interesting. You know, you're looking at this, the bottom line of these prices is inflation is $3.73%, which means $100 back then is $103.79. That means on a $3,600 increase, it's only like 160 bucks. So you, inflation is not accounting for this. They are raising prices because they can. They're raising prices because the market's really hot. They're increasing raising prices because they need to get recuperate some of their expenses from COVID. I mean, this is, I, I can kind of get that plant shut down. It's really expensive for them, but you're going to pay for it. You're going to pay for higher pricing. You're going to pay for restricted inventory and you're going to have a lo longer loan terms on these. You're going to have, I mean, we're already hearing stories of seven, eight years loan terms on these trucks. And so that's the reality of things is that it just was shocking to me when I started really digging the data, data and realizing that no, it's true. Uh, different brands, I mean, different amounts, right? So you can say that you can go through this chart and you can argue that, say, Toyota didn't do it as badly as, say, Chevy or Ford did or Nissan did, but Toyota is one of the oldest trucks out there. So, I mean, all the tooling dying should have been paid for years ago and all the R&D should be paid for, so they shouldn't have to increase pricing that much on a Toyota Tundra. Um, but, man, the Nissan pricing, I mean, $6,500, that's a chunk of change on that truck. You know, that's almost, uh, if so... I'm not the best at math, but 52 or 56,000 um, divided by, say, 6,500. Uh, that's almost 9%, 8.6% of the total price they increased in just two years. Uh, looking at, you know, you go back to Ford, go to Chevy, and I mean, 3,000, 6,000, 4,000. I mean, I'm going to double check that $6,000 number, but, um, but yeah, I mean, you're looking at all these numbers. I mean, Ford. The platinum, I mean, you know, the platinum pricing, and and like I said again, this is before you option it. This is before you put uh, bigger tires on it. Before you put any of the equipment packages. Before you do anything else, it's already five grand, six grand, eight grand more, and not eight grand, but six grand more than what you're paying before. And so across the board, before you even begin buying a new truck, the base price is already up, which means all the packages can add to that, and the packages get expensive, and it's just it's a whole thing. So let me know in the comments below. Are you surprised by this? Did you see this coming? Are you like, well, Tim, it's no big deal. I mean, again, incentives anyways, which I call BS on. But you know, I, I was just surprised. When I started digging the data, I was like, man, this is really going to, this is really, wow. This is really crazy information. So, hey, comment below. Let me know. Check this video out over, over here. Website down below, as always. Thanks for watching. I'll see you down the road.